you over here. How's that? <laughs>
may or may not speak depending on experience right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. you're welcome okay last one Hi. We good? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I should have moved it for you. Wonder why I was sitting up straight. <laughs> Good. All right, I'd like to go ahead and call this meeting of the uh, November four or December fourteenth, uh, two thousand sixteen Planning Commission meeting to order. First order of business is the roll call. Chair Wilson. Here. Vice Chair Kurth. Here. Commissioner Huber is absent for tonight's meeting. Commissioner Porter. Here. And Commissioner Dew. Present. Thank you. All right, if you would please rise for the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Kurth and Commissioner Porter. Please bow your heads as we pray. Lord, as we, as we move into this uh, holiday season, we thank you for the opportunity that we're able to meet in a public setting such as tonight in this great free country. Please bless this meeting so that the decisions that are made are in the best interest of this city and its citizens. Amen. Please fa face the flag of our wonderful country and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. All right. The first order of business is the approval of minutes from our November 9th, 2016 meeting. So moved. Second. I have a motion by uh, Commissioner Dew, a second by Chair Wilson to approve the Planning Commissioner regular meeting minutes of November 9th, 2016. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Those minutes have been approved with Commissioner Huber absent. All right, uh, we will start with agenda item number one. I'm Mr. Mr. Chairman, before we start on agenda item number one, I know most everyone here tonight is probably here for agenda item number one, but I would like to ask you if you could, agenda item number one will be the longest item on the agenda. Items number two and three will go pretty quick. We have a presentation after item number three. If you would mind staying around, we'd appreciate it. Thanks. All right, uh, agenda item number one, I am gonna go ahead and recuse myself as I have made uh, recent contributions to the church and I would not want there to be an appearance of impropriety. So I'm gonna go ahead and recuse myself.
Okay, let's go ahead and um, start with agenda item number one. Um, can we uh, have the staff report, please? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Agenda item number one is actually two cases. It's case number PLN 15-00017, which is a parcel map for the proposed site, and an associated case, PLN 16-00021, uh, which is, uh, consists of a site plan to allow for a phase development, um, as well as a conditional use permit for the allowance of a fuel dispensing facility, and lastly, a conditional use permit that would allow for alcohol sales to take place at said uh, fuel dispensing facility. It's located uh, approximately 300 feet east of the northeast corner of Balsam Road and the Squally Road. The site in general, uh, as a site plan, um, meets all requirements of Title 16 as conditioned. Um, it has sufficient parking within each parcel uh, for each use, sufficient landscaping in accordance with Title 16, 16 including uh, sufficient buffers from the residential zone to the east in accordance with Title 16, and building design that meets uh, the requirements of the commercial design guidelines. Um, site access as proposed also meets requirements of Title 16. However, um, it should be noted that part of this, as part of this process, the initial um, discussions with staff and the applicant, staff did request uh, shared access with the property to the west. This is primarily due to um, the limited access that will be allowed on that commercial front end there by the engineering department. They allow um, so many uh, accesses within so many feet of an intersection. So the applicant was not able to obtain that. Um, so what they did is they put the entire uh, drive aisle on their property, um, which is allowable and meets code. However, staff would recommend that um, reciprocal access is granted back to the property to the west. This would allow for order, orderly development in the future if approved. Um, it would also address future access needs for that property to the west because being on a major arterial roadway, it would likely be um, necessary for that parcel. Um, <clears throat> within uh, phase one of the property, which is abutting the Squally Road, is the fuel dispensing facility. Um, it would also include an accessory convenience store with a drive through and an automated car wash. Um, as of this writing, staff does not have any hours of operation or operating number of employees or, or the like, but it's, it's assumed that it may include hours that are not typical for the surrounding residential neighborhood due to the nature of the use. Um, fuel dispensing facilities themselves are listed as conditional with the underlying C2 zone district. Typically, these uses are located on a hard corner um, on the intersection itself. This would be due to accessibility, visibility, um, and vehicle traffic. However, it should be noted that this subject site um, is accessed by a major arterial roadway with direct access to Interstate 15, um, and there is not another fuel dispensing facility um, within over a mile of the subject site. Being that it's a fuel dispensing facility, it allows the proposal to also, um, or the applicant to also ask for the sale of alcohol, specifically beer and wine. Um, as proposed, the facility would require the approval of a finding of public convenience and necessity. The underlying census tract within that zone allows five off sale licenses, whereas right now there are six. Um, the municipal code does allow them to ask for that approval um, if approved by the planning commission. Um, should the planning commission approve a finding of public convenience and necessity, the California Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control would likely not approve an alcohol license for that site, so that, that should be noted as well. Their, their uh, standards um, are proximity of specific uses like schools, churches, things like that, and how they would be affected by, negatively by the proposed use. Um, they can deny a license based on that, based on um, no finding a public convenience or necessity if required, um, or also if it creates a public nuisance, they can find that as a means to deny an alcohol license. Um, <clears throat> beyond that, staff has received um, over 105, actually approximately 115 letters of opposition to the proposed project, mostly coming from um, parishioners of a, of a church in the vicinity. As you can see in the staff report, there is a location map that shows the distance from that church. Um, most of those issues um, are related to the, actually all of them related to the fuel dispensing facility and the potential for alcohol sales, specifically the proximity of the site, uh, the safety of the community, the potential for increased crime and the potential for traffic generated as well as 
adult-oriented oriented materials and potential tobacco sales were noted as concerns um, in those letters in, in general, as what was noted. Um, I can note that we have received uh, feedback from the police department, um, noting that the site is not in an excessive crime area at this point, and they did not feel that um, the approval would increase crime in the area or create a law enforcement issue as proposed. Um, as such, they recommended approval of the project, but did note, in fact, that there was a school within the proximity of the site. Uh, based on those issues, um, staff would recommend to utilize the options provided in the staff report um, and determine if the proposed discretionary use, specifically the fueling dispensing facility and alcohol sales, is appropriate for the noted location, taking in, into account the, the notes in the staff report as well as any public comment provided today. Thank you. Are there any questions from the commission? Um, with the with the conditional use permit, if there there was any problems, we could um, hold a public hearing and deny their their conditional use permit if it caused any public safety problems. Right? Uh, there are rec revocation proceedings in the municipal code. Um, Specifically for alcohol sales, yes, that could be done. It would be difficult with the fuel dispensing facility, although it would still be within the realm of what's allowable. Once it's purpose built, it, it becomes maybe a concern there for the commission, but it is within the realm of what's allowable by municipal code. Yes. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes. If I'm not mistaken, I, I thought he, uh, the staff report indicated that the alcohol administration would not be in favor of approval. Did you indicate that? In your statement, your briefing? The, the, well, I'm sorry, the drug and alcohol? Right. ABC? Yes. Um, if the finding of public convenience and necessity was denied, they, they would likely not approve the use. Okay. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Then at this point, um, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the public hearing. I see a lot of uh, people in the audience, more people than, than normal at these meetings. I'm going to assume a lot of you may be here for this item number one. Um, the way we do this is everyone uh, who has given us one of these white cards with their name and address on it is allowed to speak tonight. Okay, The first one that's going to speak would be the applicant, and then we're going to open it up to anyone else. Um, some of the ground rules that we've uh, taken in the past is that when someone comes up to speak with a card, we ask that you limit your comments to about three minutes. Otherwise, it can drag on for a long time and kind of get numbing. So we do ask if you could, you know, make your uh, comments fit within a three-minute window. And we also ask that if, you know, a large majority of people are speaking, that we try not to repeat exactly what the people before us have said, because rest assured, we did get a lot of information on this project tonight. It's in all of our packages. We have every last 115 of the letters, and I, I can say that I've personally read through every single one of them. The concerns are very clear, um, and I personally understand your concerns. If you do want to come up, we just say try not to be repetitive over and over what the others have said. If you feel you want to come up and say, hey, I can concur with what you know, somebody else has just said or some of the comments, that would be great because that's, that's your rights to come up and speak. So that's why we'll handle that. So the first speaker I have is actually the applicant, uh, Mr. Steve uh, Wild. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good evening to you and evening. members of the commission. Uh, first of all, I'd like to describe, and I think you have additional materials that were passed out earlier, the, the concept which we are proposing to implement at this location. It's a new concept, and it basically is an upscale neighborhood market. The property is two and a half acres, and this building itself will be about 7,250 square feet which is over three times the size of a typical convenience market that you associate with uh, fueling facilities. The concept is called uh, Beyond, and it includes a number of very unique features. It would include Fat Burger. It would include th Thrifty Ice Cream Counter, Buffalo Wings, Fresh Deli Sandwiches, and Specialty Coffee, in addition to the normal things that you would expect in the market of uh, fresh produce and what have you. 
Our location is, is important because the area to which it will serve is underserved right now. There are no market facilities within a mile and a half of this location. And so there is an unmet need, and I think this facility will fully satisfy that. The uh, hours of operation will be 24 hours a day. The, uh, uh, that, that, and alcohol sales will also be pursuant to state law, which is no alcohol sales between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. In terms of staffing this facility, we anticipate that it would take the equivalent of 20 full-time staff members and that it will generate in terms of total taxes annually of about $25 million in taxable sales. This concept has already been implemented in another, well, several cities actually, including Chino Hills, Palm Springs, um, Temecula, and uh, downtown Los Angeles. And in fact, the same concept is about to get underway in nearby Apple Valley. We have uh, reviewed the staff recommended conditions of approval uh, for both the commercial development and the parcel map, and we concur with all of those recommended conditions. And I would like to thank Alex for all his good hard work in helping this project shepherded through the, the uh, planning process here in Victorville. Uh, with me tonight, uh, there are other members of our team. That would include uh, Tom Lau, the architect, Michael Brewer, who is an expert on alcoholic beverage issues, and Michael Ramirez, representing the current owner and seller to, uh, to our company. So that would conclude my comments. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions or whatever you prefer to do. Questions for the applicant at this time? I don't either, and if you want to, you can have a seat, and we may have some questions, um, you know, as we wrap it up. The next card I have is from uh, Mr. Martin. Good evening, Commission, Good evening. and Merry Christmas to you, too, as well. Thank you. My name is John Martin. I serve as a lead pastor at First Assembly of God Church. I also serve as a superintendent of schools for Victor Valley Christian School. Uh, our church has been in existence for 66 years, and we have been a, a viable and a wonderful part of the community uh, for those years. We have been uh, serving as a school uh, since 1970 and have a K-12 school uh, that offers great service to our community and a preschool that also does the same. Uh, we have children on our property uh, six days a week uh, with the school Monday through Friday, and then obviously on Sundays, uh, some special events that take place from time to time on Saturdays as well, as well that puts us as um, children, underaged kids on our property, sometimes even seven days a week. Uh, we are very concerned about a safety issue that's in front of us as uh, we have uh, completed an uh, overpass and exchange uh, having resulted now in the uh, need to hire 24-7 uh, uh, physical presence on our property, uh, dealing with vandalism and other issues that are happening on the church premises. Uh, we uh, stand opposed to where we are tonight with this project, knowing that we do not want to limit the city in moving forward with things that need to be done to further the city, and we certainly understand that. On the other hand, we are very concerned about the sale of alcohol and pornography uh, that could be in front of us uh, through uh, a gas station and uh, what services are provided uh, therewith. Uh, we know that there is, and I know that you've been alerted to this, uh, through the California Business Code and the Sale of Alcohol, the Business and Professional Code, Section 23789, which states that the department is specifically authorized to refuse the license and issuance of retail license for the premises 
located within the immediate vicinity of churches and hospitals. Uh, The second paragraph of that, paragraph B, goes on to say that the department is specifically authorized to refuse the issuance other than renewal or ownership transfer of any retail license for premises located within at least 600 feet of schools, public playgrounds, or nonprofit youth facilities. And certainly we we, uh, not only have that, uh, but uh, that 600 feet is almost cut in half in terms of uh, the impact to our property. Uh, we are concerned as to the availability and the uh, viability of impact upon uh, the students, and upon our school, upon our church. Uh, we have had the opportunity, as you may know, we own property on the corner of Balsam and Nisqually that is undeveloped, that is adjacent to the property before us tonight. And uh, we had opportunity to bring a gas station in ourselves, and we've chosen not to do that. So we stand in opposition for moral and ethical reasons, for the same reason that, that we've chosen not to do that ourselves. We would stand opposed to that, knowing that the impact is, is rather large. We're also concerned about the saturation of, of the region uh, with the uh, sale of alcohol that's there in front of us. And so... Uh, I'll, I'll just wrap up my comments at this point. Hey, take your time. It seems like you might be the kind of the leader of this being a pastor. Go I, ahead and say what you want to say, and then others can follow after you. Okay. Um, we're, we're concerned about the sale of uh, alcohol within the region and the impact that is, that is there. And uh, I, I understand what um, has been said tonight about the, uh, um, the side of our police department taking the position that they have. I just know that uh, loitering is uh, is a typical issue around gas stations, uh, and the impact that would then continue to have upon properties around us. And so, huge concern to us uh, as we are dealing with this issue that's in front of us. And so, thank you for that. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, next one I have is uh, Josh Gerbrack. Well, thank you once again for allowing us to speak tonight, and I want to say uh, a special thank you to Michael Ramirez for meeting with us many times on this project, and also to staff for their help in kind of walking us through uh, some of the issues that we have had concerns with. Uh, I also serve as a pastor, one of the pastors at the church, but I also have three kids in the school, and uh, 15, 13, and 11, and I'm very concerned about uh, this convenience store that would be serving alcohol near my kids. And I'm asking you to oppose giving a conditional use permit for this project. Uh, I have concerns for the 250 kids that are in a youth group on a Wednesday night, the many students that are here on a Sunday morning, the over 350 students that we have in our school. I believe that will be impacted negatively by allowing this project to go through. As has been stated already, uh, there's been uh, a lot of crime that we have faced as a church and a school. Uh, we've had to install uh, security gates, uh, security cameras. We've had to hire uh, more personnel. Uh, we've had cars broken into, things stolen. And so to say we're not in a, in a crime area, uh, I think uh, it's not true. I think we're facing that issue, and I believe that allowing a uh, organization establishment that would be serving alcohol and other things uh, would, again, be uh, negative uh, for us. So, again, just as a, as a parent... And as a pastor at the church, I'm asking to please oppose allowing this condition of use permit to go forward. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Joshua McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to say thank you to all of you that serve on this planning commission for all of your efforts for our city, making it safer and a better place to raise families. Uh, I'm opposed to this as well, I concur with all the reasons that have been given. I uh, also want to mention, as a parent of four students at our preschool and school, a 13-year-old, a 6-year-old, a 4-year-old, and a 2-year-old uh, that are there consistently at least five, sometimes six days a week, uh, that I am concerned uh, heavily with the sale of alcohol and also loitering, as has been mentioned, uh, to mention since the freeway has been opened up and the overpass has been done. We've seen loitering go up even during school hours and have uh, had several issues with that. So also concerned that if we open this type of business up that it will really introduce even more loitering and more uh, unsafe situations for our children and for our students. So I'm asking that you would oppose this business going in. Thank you for your time. 
Thank you. Robert Tirado. Good evening. Um, my name is Robert Tirado. I am head of facilities at First Assembly of God and also Victor Valley Christian School. Um, I'm the guy that usually deals with uh, the loitering, the crimes, the breaking in, the graffitis, and the things that are being done. So um, I've noticed on my part when we have to remove people from our campus that uh, are trespassing, are doing these things in our campus, for the most part, uh, these are people that are already coming from gas stations. And the reason that I'm saying this, I also am in charge of filling up our vehicles. So I'm always going to the Chevron, the Mobiles, the Arco. And a lot of these people that are being removed from our premises by our, uh, uh, the officers at, um, at uh, Victorville that, uh, that are removed from our, our campus, we end up seeing them there. And this is a constant thing that's always happening at our, our facilities. So um, when I hear that you know, the, the officers or the police department says that it's not gonna impact us, it, it is. Um, on the contrary, it's just bringing it closer to us because a lot of these people are already coming at, from gas stations. Um, it's easier for them now since the bridge was open uh, for them to cross, but for the most part they come down and then they head down to, sorry, they head down to Arco uh, Mobile, but now since you guys, well, they want to open these gas stations that are near to our, our campus, it just gives them accessibility uh, to our campus even easier. Um, but we've had uh, plenty of incidents in our campus uh, that threaten students, not only students, but employees. Uh, we've had them uh, coming into even our buildings um, with, uh, and, and scared some of our ladies in front office and these are people that are being removed and taken back, and we see them back in gas stations. So uh, that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mark Taylor. Hello, my name is uh, Mark Taylor. I'm vice chairman of the board at uh, First Assembly. And uh, I also would like to uh, thank the commission for the time that you spend in serving uh, our community and uh, the fact that you'd read 115 letters, that's uh, admirable. And we appreciate that. And uh, for the times of Scott and Alex that we've uh, come by and asked for um, meetings, uh, you've been more than gracious. You've answered our dumb questions and helped us out. And, and we just appreciate that very much. I want to say thank you. On uh, April the 22nd of 2014, the city conducted a joint workshop of the city council. And among other things, they were discussing uh, problematic issues involved with alcohol sales. And uh, at that time, over half of Victorville's 14 census tract areas were all oversaturated. They were over-concentrated with off-sale, uh, and I uh, suppose on-sale, uh, alcohol licenses. In other words, they had more alcohol licenses than uh, the ABC would recommend. As a result of that workshop, it's my understanding that this commission, or at least this body, I don't know if it was those of you who are pre present now, uh, it was four months later. Uh, August the 13th, 2014, um, you met to discuss this very thing as a result of this workshop. And the number one bullet point on your agenda that day read as follows. Limit the number of small alcohol retailers within over-concentrated census tracts. That's a commendable undertaking one that I'm sure all the citizens of the high desert would appreciate. Fast forward 28 days, 28 months and one day. And that brings us to tonight.
you're being asked by the applicant or petitioner to make an exception to what you resolved two years ago. And as I'm sure the commission is aware, the concentration factor has not improved. It's gotten worse. The 20 surrounding census tracts or thereabouts, they only have three that I can discover that are less than the ABC recommended. A very timely article in the Daily Press just four days ago pointed out the fact that Barstow now has some 27 licenses within a two mile stretch on Main Street, far exceeding the recommendations of the ABC. During the last four quarters, the city of Barstow has collected or received over $3 million in tax revenue. And I get that. That was no doubt a factor in their decision over the years. But today, Barstow City Council will tell you this, and I quote, Main Street is saturated with liquor stores. One Barstow councilman has quoted just four days ago as saying, in my opinion, this is quote, in my opinion, nobody paid attention. Now we reach the, this point of oversaturation and have all these social problems that come along with having oversaturation of liquor stores. There's a reason the state regulates alcohol because it creates a number of problems, end of quote. An identical issue with off-sale liquor in Victorville is before you tonight. Tonight we should pay attention, as the councilman put it. Barstow is struggling today to get to where you were two years ago, addressing the issue. Experience is now on your side and a resolution you have as experience. Today, the petitioner is asking you to, to digress from your solution of two years ago. Let's not digress, let's move forward. There aren't a room full of people here tonight clamoring for more alcohol outlets. There are, however, many people represented here tonight by their presence, by their letters, or perhaps both. We want to be good neighbors to the city, and we want to move forward with you. But we do not support proliferation of alcoholic outlets under the guise of necessity or convenience simply because we're not paying attention. We urge you to do the right thing. Deny this project or deny petitioner's application for the sale of alcohol. Thank you. Thank you. Jay Jeffries. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, my name is Jay Jeffries. I'm a parent of the, my third child at that school, and I've been a member of this church for a quarter century. Just a couple of things, and I'll be as briefly, brief as possible. I just want to respond to a couple of things I heard. First of all, with, from that location, we've got three stations within about a mile for fuel and, th and two more within about two miles. So we've got five within about two and a quarter miles. So I, I don't see an, a need for a fuel station to be in that place. Um, furthermore, we have more off-sale licenses than, than we should, based, based on the demographics. Uh, someone just said that. I, am, I work for an, a business accounting firm. I am pro-business. I believe that this spot right here is a great location for a business. I believe that. But just because it's an upscale design doesn't mean anything about the patronage, about, about the customers. Otherwise, Rolls-Royce would put a dealership on that street. It's a, it, 
we are concerned about the elements that are, that are attracted to these types of businesses within 300 feet of our school. While it's a, while it's a great business, it'll, it'll probably be a great business, and it will contribute a couple million dollars a year to the city, we have a higher responsibility. Every, every community's primary responsibility to its citizens is for their safety. Without it, we have no freedom. And we as parents, we as prisoners, and we as part of that community should be able to expect the same thing from our city. Guys, look up on top of your seal there and do the right thing. Thank you. Culver Tackett? Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. My name is Arnold Tackett, and uh, I'll be very brief. I just want to concur with what has already been said here. I come not only as a concerned uh, citizen, but as a concerned grandparent. Uh, my granddaughter attends the school there. Uh, Victor Valley Christian School has gone to great lengths to make this, the school secure, uh, security gates, uh, motion detectors, uh, cameras, uh, and to me, what we're looking at here is in direct opposition to that safety. Thank you. Thank you. And your name was Arnold. I have another card here. I think it said Culver. Is there another? And it says Tackett. Is there another Tackett? Gwen. Gwen Tackett. Is Gwen here? Good evening, thank you. I am a marriage family counselor here in the high desert, and I concur with what has been said, um, but I also would like to just mention that in what I do on a daily basis, many times hour after hour, a big percentage, and I would say uh, realistically about 70, 75%, of the dysfunction that I see within families and individuals has to do with um, the, the alcohol consumption, the um, being introduced to it as a child many times, and seeing that travel in their lives. Uh, we offer recovery classes um, weekly. Um, I wish we didn't even have to do that. But it, there is a great need. Um, I would ask you to please oppose this for the sake of families and children. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy Martinez. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the opportunity of allowing us to address you tonight. Um, my name is Kathy Martinez, and I have been a resident of Victorville um, since 2003. We've raised uh, five children, our oldest being 18 and our youngest uh, being two years old. Um, we've attended Victorville First Assembly for approximately 12 years now. Um, our children were raised in church, and um, thankful for so many of the youth programs, children's programs that are offered at church, um, which obviously help our community. I'm here to oppose the CUP to allow the sales of alcohol at the proposed site as the proximity of the business is not suitable or appropriate for this neighborhood. Uh, we feel it's way too close to church. Our children, our youth are too exposed to it. And um, with the number of teens nowadays um, having easy access to alcohol, I believe it's... Um, it's too close. It's definitely too close. Another concern is that um, the visibility around the area is not the greatest. And um, there's a lot of pedestrians. Um, because of the overpass, traffic is a lot heavier. We've witnessed cars um, run through red lights through that intersection. And um, with pedestrians walking at any given time around um, the convenience store and all that stuff, it just puts our citizens into a lot more danger. Um, I do want to add that um, 
many people think, I mean, we're here representing the church, and uh, many people think that we oppose to the CUP because our, maybe our religion, because they think that, you know, churches are probably full of saints, but to the contrary, we deal with so many families um, where alcohol has been a culprit of accidents, domestic violence, separation, divorce, among other things. And as a church, we're trying to reach out to transform our community, and we're trying to do it one family at a time. For a person who's trying to get sober, walking into a gas station that sells alcohol can mean walking out with alcohol in their hands, getting in their car, and um, getting drunk maybe around the corner. The city already has enough alcohol outlets, and we do not need another one within the proximity of our church and our school. We do not need to see it 300 feet away from where our children or our teens are, our families are. And I'm going to quote a Sacramento police captain, Ted Mandela, who once commented that people purchase alcohol and consume it close by, and they become bold enough to do things they would not ordinarily do or they consume alcohol and become prey. This is something we don't want in our city. We don't want to add that to our city because we already have enough crime going around. Um, I want to add that for years, my husband uh, managed a gas station um, in the city of Pomona, and um, the, the station never sold alcohol. However, day and night, he witnessed um, so many crimes happening right outside his window. My mom currently works in the city of Chino, which um, has a lower crime rate than Victorville does. And um, same situation, the gas station does not sell alcohol, and day and night um, she witnesses um, crimes happening around the station. She witnesses um, people overdosing in the bathrooms, thefts around, and um, we believe that alcohol sales and that proximity would just increase um, the crimes that we already have going around the neighborhood. So um, with that said, I thank you once again tonight for listening to our concerns. Thank you. Cindy Ramos. Hi, Commission. Thank you for listening to us. Um, I am a parent of three children that go to school. I'm a parishioner as well. Um, my children are in fourth grade, sixth grade, and a senior in high school. They've gone there since they were in preschool. I am also a school administrator at a different school, public school in Victorville. And um, as an administrator, my main concern for my students is always safety. That is first and foremost on my mind with all the crimes that have happened throughout the country, with school shootings and such. Um, we know crimes happen at gas stations, and you're going to, the ARCO right over here has had um, armed robberies and shootings. Um, when you had the nightclub over here on 7th Street, there were shootings. When there were a nightclub was over there on, uh, right across from where El Super is, there were shootings, and those were all closed down for that purpose, for that reason. And I think that allowing alcohol sales and the type of people that will gravitate to that area are putting the students at more risk because they're right across the street, um, and, and along with all the other concerns that I don't need to restate. And the um, California PTA has also come um, in a po opposition to there being alcohol sales within 600 feet of schools as well for the same reason as alcohol is a drug and we're in a drug-free, you know, we want to keep our schools in a drug-free zone and keep our kids away from those things. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Henry Ramos. Um, once, once again, thank you for your time. Um, um, Cindy's husband, I also have three kids there at the school. I've been participating in the church for about six years now. I volunteer with the kids' church. So I spend a lot of time with the kids. Um, and to have that facility offering the drugs, or I should say the alcohol, um, which is a drug, so close is concerning. Um, reading a, an article that was published by the Daily Press, um, we were ranked number nine 
in California municipalities for a crime rate, number nine. Um, I'd find it very hard for anybody in this room to find out, to tell me that alcohol would, would lower that or make it better. Alcohol would just contribute to that. And having that that close, and sometimes the people who come to the church are looking for help coming from that world. And having that net right across the street for them to partake, it's kind of tough. Um, and as a parent, I got three boys, um, it's hard enough with TV, much less them seeing that right across the street from their church, contrary to what they're being taught, contrary to what we should allow our kids to be subject to. Might be just my opinion, but uh, we, can't, we can't argue with being ranked ninth in crime rate in the state of California and alcohol not being a part of that. That's how I feel about it. Thank you. Uh, Jerry uh, Borja. Thank you, appreciate the time that you guys have for us here. Uh, just wanted to say that I was born and raised here, 1974, I was born here, and I've seen this city uh, really grow over the years, and, and then excited that there's the development that's, that's coming, and excited that uh, the developers are interested in advancing the city in a great way. Uh, but as a parent of three children at the school, I'm concerned because of the proximity, and to reiterate some of the things that were said here, but to quickly get through it is, you know, 600 feet being the recommendation, and we're at 300 feet for the proximity of where uh, this is. I would like us to all consider, as well as you guys, to put the families first. Uh, before we put business, before we put even alcohol consumption and alcohol sales, uh, put our families first. Because I, I, I think many of us would agree in here, if we put our families first and we put our children first, that this city would grow tremendously over the years. And this, I think, would be a good uh, a way for, for you guys to make a stance of, hey, you know, families do matter to the city of Victorville. Families do matter uh, here before uh, the consumption of alcohol, tobacco, pornography, and those things that are, that are in place. So thank you for your time. Uh, again, I just... Thank you for your consideration for uh, denying the alcohol rights for this project. Thank you. Thank you. I have Kevin Bryant. Good evening. Thank you very much. Um, I was a part of Victor Valley for a long time. I am employed by the, the, the church there and actually went to the Balsam Drive-In back in the day. So. Um, my concern comes from the transient traffic that can happen, the foot traffic regarding this location and with the alcohol from behind Home Depot to the Victor Valley School District Transportation Facility all the way through east of our property there at the church and down into the wash, down to the Green Tree area. A lot of foot traffic goes on because it's not visible to a lot of um, other businesses. And um, the idea of, of, we've already heard our security issues that we have in the evenings and things, but and the lady before us talked about the alcohol making us bolder. I just can't imagine if they're already bold enough to be on our, on our facility going through for some, some security issues, how much more the transient traffic will hang out in those areas amongst the desert there. And it's a, it's a major concern. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, that's all the cards I have. Um, is there anyone else that feels they would like to come up and speak at this time? Okay, I, I see a gentleman here. If you could um, fill out a, a card um, when you're, yeah, when you're finished. We have cards up here. Um, you can you can finish it out, fill that out when you're when you're finished. Thank mm -hmm. you. Hi, my name is David Metals. I'm a resident of Apple Valley, um, but I come before you. I work for a local fire department, and I do attend uh, Victorville First Assembly, but I do work for a local fire department, and I actually have worked in several different locations, the city of San Bernardino, up here in the high desert, uh, up in the mountains. And so I have seen um, in many occasions um, where we deal with a lot of the homeless population. And as a church, the homeless, uh, we have a, a heart for the homeless, and, and we try to help them out and assist them in the ways that we can, but there is a certain element that comes with them. And being... Uh, if you ever notice that the groupings in the high desert here of the homeless population is surrounded around a convenient gas station, convenient store, 
where it's a simple walk to the location to either solicit for, for money or to uh, buy alcohol, pornography, cigarettes, whatever. They, and that is very common for them. Um, similar to the AMPM right down the street off of uh, um, Roy Rogers. If you just go a little bit north, down through that wash, there's a very large homeless encampment. The same thing right off of Bear Valley. And then they're all centered around convenience stores like this. So does it bring, not that we don't discredit their situation, we want to help them out, but do we really want them right up against our school property and, uh, and what, what comes with that? Uh, you talk to any of the fire department personnel that respond, medical aids, um, beatings, assaults that happen, they usually center around, if it's, if it's involving the homeless, it's usually centered around the convenience stores or gas stations. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Merry Christmas. You too. Thank you. Anyone else? I see a hand here. And once again, when you're done speaking, if you just take one of these cards, fill it out, and just return it back here to our secretary, Tessa. Hi. <clears throat> Thank you. My name is Sarah Mays. I'm coming as a concerned parent. Um, I have lived, I was born and raised in Barstow, so I um, have seen the city change. I am now a resident of Victorville for the last four years. Um, one of the reasons that we did move was due to um, the poverty and the depreciation, depre the city had depreciated. Um, the, for me, growing up there, it was a nice city. I was able to walk anywhere I'd like, but as soon as they put in multiple places to buy alcohol, it was no longer the same city. I was more... Um, I'll just be honest, I was afraid in certain areas due to the high volume of um, impoverished people. Um, moving here, um, I was able to put my daughter into school and appreciate the environment, appreciate the safety. But since the bridge has been placed in, we do have security issues. I do believe that bringing forth a liquor, um, a place where alcohol is being sold, it will create um, a type of traffic that we don't want, you know, that puts our children at risk. I also have had the privilege to work um, at the prayer house in um, on 7th Street. As I drive down there, um, you see uh, many liquor stores, as you know, on 7th Street with lots of um, people who are at risk. Also, sitting with the recidivism board, I know that many inmates are being released and they may not struggle anymore with drugs, but now they turn to alcohol. So I do just feel that it does create a liability and it does create an environment that puts our children at risk. So I too am opposed. Thank you. Thank you. I saw a hand in the very back, ma'am. I saw your hand as well, sir, if you want to if you want to come and grab a card, you can get that filled out, and then you're, you're next in line. <laughs> Hello. My name is Deborah Page. I've been a resident of the high desert since 1977. I'm a homeowner. I live in Apple Valley. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have seen so many changes in the high desert since 1977. When I came up, it was a safe haven where people waved at each other. There was um, an openness. People were friendly. Well, excuse me, gotta catch my breath. <clears throat> Since that time, I have watched and also I have become a legal advocate and a domestic violence advocate. I have worked with a homeless shelter. I have watched the rising of the problem with alcoholism. This church has presented such a safe haven for people to come to be able to get help and the tools they need to overcome these addictions as well as domestic violence. They aid in that as well. All they are asking basically is what most people get criticized for because they are not protecting their children. CPS gets involved, crimes against children. However, these are parents who are concerned for the future of their children. And I would hope and pray that that would be your concern as well. And 
the fact that we have enough <laughs> liquor stores in the area to far exceed the problems that we've got. My, my son is a sheriff in this area, and he as well sees the problem. Alcoholism creates much more problems than people already have with the economy. However, <clears throat> my biggest concern is the welfare for these children. As the homeless do come to these areas, to liquor stores, I hate to say how many people are released up in this area that have come out of prison for pedophilia, for other crimes. Um, I, I just hope and pray that you can see your way to, to decline this. Thank you for hearing me out. Thank you. Good evening. Thanks for your, your time to hear us all out. Um, I concur with everything that's been said tonight. So my name is Tom K. Wall, and uh, so I'm, I'm a youth leader over at the church, and uh, I'm there very consistently um, with the youth, and um, Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights, Sunday, and I think that uh, my main concern is it just happens all the time where we're in with a bunch of I'm in charge of, of a lot of children and uh, you know their parents trust me and it just seems like on a consistent basis I'll find a stranger inside this youth service when the lights are down they're worshiping God and I, a stranger walks in just out of nowhere slips through the cracks and uh, you know it hurts me it hurts me because you know I'm responsible for them at that given time and uh, over the past well since the overpass has been done it seems to be a lot more frequent and, you know, this happens in broad daylight. And, uh, you know, I'm scared that the kids are going to walk out or even go to their car. I don't let them do that. And, uh, you know, I just think the, uh, the addition of alcohol in that general area will increase the problems that we already have. So, so please, deny this project. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, my name is Maria Acosta, and I attend First Assembly of God Church. I also attend the uh, Hesperia Hispanic Church. And I've been a um, resident of Victorville and Apple Valley on and off since uh, 1978. So I've seen the high desert change completely. <clears throat> my concern is uh, the same as everyone has spoken, that alcohol should not be sold so close to our church, so close to the school. My children attended the first church, the first school over on the ring, so uh, I'm familiar with the school. Um, there's a lot of traffic. I've heard people have had very many accidents on this Squally Road, this one particular a uh, relative, indirect relative, was very badly injured on Nisqually. So we already have a, a speedway on Nisqually Road. Um, the furtherance of the, the convenience store and the alcohol uh, would just further aggravate it even more. Uh, a week and a half ago, almost two weeks ago, this Sunday, it'll be two weeks ago, we were coming to church, we were in the right lane, and there were two cars racing on the lane that was going to be turning right by the, uh, by the church to go into the, the side parking lot. Had my husband not been paying attention, we would have been in a very bad accident. They were racing, and they used that lane that, that is used for making a right turn there at the signal. They used it as a lane to go straight. We're on the lane to go across uh, Balsam, and they, had he not been watching, we were going to make a right-hand turn into the parking lot, they would have hit us. So we don't need any alcohol being sold so closely to the church, day or night. So that is my concern for the young children, 
that will be crossing the street possibly that live in the immediate area. So that is a very big concern for each and every one of us that are here tonight for our children, for our families. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. Good evening, uh, distinguished council members. Uh, my name is Paul Rose. I am a resident of Victorville. I have three children uh, at the Victor Valley School. Um, and my reason for up there, I occur with, concur with everything that's been said. I am opposed to this. And I think that there's a better way to do this. We're not saying we're opposed to having something that would further our community. Uh, but I think there's a better way to do it. And I don't think you can put a price in wisdom because, honestly, really, it all comes down to dollar signs. And I think that the biggest thing is wisdom is far more valuable uh, than, than money. And none of us can guarantee that something's not going to happen. So I'm not necessarily thinking of what is, but really asking you to think of, God forbid, something were to happen. And we have already, within the stipulations of it should be 600 feet, and this is not, then we're already advancing, God forbid, a tragedy uh, 300 feet in advance. And so I'm asking, again, that uh, we would put wisdom above money. Again, we would love to further our community. Uh, again, I'm not opposed to the homeless community. In fact, I look for ways to bless them. Uh, I pastor in uh, uh, Hesperia. Uh, Starbucks is uh, less than a mile away, and I'm constantly trying to aid them, and they are there. But again, I'm just thinking of the safety of my children, and I know that if this passes, uh, I will be on edge uh, as a concerned parent. But again, I'm just asking each one of you to put wisdom above uh, anything. And I know you do. Uh, we're praying for you. We constantly pray for you, and we're just asking that you would take that into consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, any other speakers in line? Carol? Good evening. Thank you for listening. Uh, my name is Carol Wells, and I am a resident of Victorville. I'm a former employee of Victor Valley Christian School. Wasn't going to talk tonight, but I have witnessed in the last few weeks several people on Sundays um, out on the corner Nisqually and Balsam in the area where they're proposing to put this convenience uh, facility and in front of our church smoking marijuana drinking this last Sunday I witnessed as we were pulling out of the church to go have lunch a gentleman standing right in front of the church on Nisqually with his hands in his pants and doing whatever I am strongly opposed to having this type of a facility in our area where it will encourage the homeless people, the people that are living in the area, wh whoever, that have no regard to the fact that we're running a church, um, and they just come in and do whatever. And I've been on the campus when there have been people coming on the campus wanting help. Um, I, Being a past employee there, I've witnessed many times being one or two employees there, women, and having to deal with a gentleman or somebody coming on the campus. This is to have this type of facility, and I'm encouraging any type of growth in that area to, you know, to encourage the growth for our city. But I am so worried about our children and the families that are dealing with alcoholism and just... Having been a child growing up under this situation, I am very concerned for our children and for our families that are trying to give up alcoholism, that they'll go to this convenience store before church and then bring that uh, element into our church, maybe having a drink before they come to church so they can go, you know, and then now they come into our church and we have to deal with the ramifications of what they're doing. So just please search your hearts to its right for our children and for our families. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone else that would like to speak to us on this? Okay. I wanted to give, uh, just in case, the uh, applicant uh, representative, did you have any follow-up questions after this, or are you? Okay, you can take your time and speak as well. Uh, first of all, I'd like to respond to the 
concern about loitering and vandalism, we are obviously likewise concerned about that. And this facility will be well lit and there'll be over 30 video cameras covering the entire property uh, to guard against those kinds of issues. Likewise, we will not be selling any pornographic material. Um, the applicant has a strong history in developing quality projects, including over 50 uh, service stations along the way, and including three here in the uh, city of Victorville, where they were built, owned, and operated for extended period of time. <coughs> and none of those had any ABC violations at any time. At this point, I'd like to ask um, another member of our team, Mr. Michael Brewer, to respond in more detail to the alcohol questions, if that's okay. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Michael Brewer. I'm an expert in alcohol beverage licensing matters. Um, we wanted to bring forth a few points that uh, we felt was important in your deliberations. One, um, this business does not focus on the sale of alcoholic beverages. We're only proposing beer and wine sales. And we're proposing less than, yeah, I think even by your ordinance, we can't even have more than 10% of our sales floor space dedicated to beer and wine. And honestly, we're not even proposing that much. Um, it's also important to, to, demonstrate, to think about that we are not having any advertising on the facility, on the buildings, in the fuel islands, or anything else that would indicate the availability within the, the store. And it's even in a condition of uh, approval that we can't have any advertising of alcoholic beverages on the building. So we don't think that we're going to create a nexus of children being able to see across the street and see the availability of our alcohol in the store. The store is oriented away from the store, so there's no way that they're going to be able to see that even alcoholic beverages are available there. We're not advertising it there. So we don't really think we're encouraging alcoholic beverage sales in the community in that way. In addition, while we don't focus on beer and wine sales at all in our stores, it is a necessary shopping ingredient, especially of a store this size being 7,500 square feet, which is a very good size store. Um, we find that if we don't offer beer and wine sales in our stores, customers will go to a store where they can get everything they want. And therefore we lose the associated food sales, gas sales, or any other uh, service or good that they wanted to purchase in our stores if we don't have the full amenities of what they want. So while we don't want to emphasize beer and wine, and we really respect the church's position on alcohol, we understand it's a, you know, it can be a dangerous product when abused, um, and we don't want to emphasize it as a part of our marketing plan, it is an essential ingredient to the success of the proposed business. Finally, um, we also wanted to, I wanted to mo note on the concentration issue. They have brought forth um, statistics that there are five allowed in the track and there's six currently existing. It's important to note that, that that ratio that's established by statute is based on the 2010 census for that uh, population in that, in that census track. There's been growth developing in that track since 2010 that won't be reflected in 2020 when the state redoes the, 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 well, the federal government does the census and then the state re-updates its, its figures on how many are allowed. So with the population growth growing in that area, I think you'll find that there's probably a, the proposal would be in line if they accounted for the increased population that's going on out there with what is going uh, um, with what would be allowed in the, the tract in terms of an appropriate number based on the census tract ratios. Um, we're here to answer any other questions. We definitely uh, feel that it would be appropriate to be able to retail a small amount of beer and wine in a store that is offering a many other amenities to the community, most of which are going to be food service and other things, um, a car wash. They haven't talked about all the other amenities that are part of this project. And it's been really focused on the alcohol sales, which really is a small part of our, our overall project. Thank you. I'm here to answer any questions you may have, and we l look forward to your uh, support on this project. Any questions, commissioners? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, sir, if you could. Thank you. One of the questions that the, um, the people, individuals who are opposed to the project they mentioned pornography, and I just heard in your presentation there is no pornography. Is that correct? Yes, we do not sell any adult materials in the 
in the store. No pornog pornography or any other associated type of materials. Okay, and um, I thought there was uh, a mention of several types of entities in your project. Could you uh, go over those for me? Sure, um, I'll have uh, the other uh, representative come up and describe them, but there are some other food service uh, there will be a fat burger outlet inside. Uh -huh. There will be thrifty ice cream counter. There will be uh, buffalo wings. And there will be specialty coffee in addition to the normal activities that you see in the market. So those are the unique uh, things. In fact, I think this was passed around to the commissioners earlier. Thank you. I think they already have, have them, which graphically shows the, the, the type of operation and what's going to be in there. Okay. And so, sir, um, does the uh, coffee uh, establishment, do they sell alcohol? No. Okay. Um, the wings establishment, do they sell alcohol? No. Does the um, thrifty venue, does it sell alcohol? Pardon me? I think you said something about thrifty ice cream or? No, there will be alcohol sales as part of the store activity, but not associated with those particular unique uses. And there will be no consumption of alcohol on site. Fat this is all, Okay. excuse me. Fat burger, will they be selling any alcohol or beer? No. Or wine? No. So the only place they're selling beer and wine would be service station for off sale you cannot there's no on sale where you can consume alcohol on site it's all for off sale all of these uses are in, contained in one store so we have a fat burger express we have the deli counter it's all contained within the store like when you go into a modern supermarket now and sometimes you'll see a bank you'll see a deli counter you'll see other services but it's all within the store the only alcohol beverage services that are proposed are off-site packaged beer and wine to be consumed away from the premises. There will be no on-site consumption of alcohol within the facility okay. or on the grounds. We can't, by statute, even allow it in anywhere. So if we saw loitering, we have to stop it. Okay, I have a question. Why did you find this particular parcel or location um, adequate for your objective? Why? Well, uh, well a couple of things. When, when you look at how do we use this concept, mm -hmm. it's for market, create a market. Well, if you look around the neighborhood, there are no other market facilities within a mile or more. And the proximity of the I-15 freeway, of course, is important for uh, fuel, con fuel sales. So you put those two together, and I think you would come up with a unique product that will be, I think, welcomed by the neighborhood because those kinds of facilities don't exist nearby. Okay, I, I'd like to ask you this question. If um, wine and beer is eliminated altogether, would you find, for what your purpose is, would you find it profitable at all? I think that would be difficult for us to assure that this would be a profitable operation. I think there's, all of these elements work together to make it profitable, and I think that's a, a, an important part of it as well. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. One other further point I wanted to clarify on. I noticed that the, the opposition had pointed out that there's a 600-foot rule at the state level. First of all, we, I want to make a point that it's, it, it, it is a consideration of the state licensing, but it, even in the own staff report, it's not a mandated denial. The mere proximity of a church or a school to an outlet is not sufficient grounds in and of itself under state law to deny an alcoholic beverage license. And I don't believe the city code has any similar requirement that we have this separation. So before you deny it, it, the 600 foot rule will be addressed at the state level when we go through our state licensing and may not be germane to this particular discussion. All right. Um, with that, then I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing and I'm going to. Mr. Yeah. Chairman. I thought uh, I'd like to ask some questions of the pastor. Uh, yeah, sure. Public hearing's open. Uh, thank you. Yep. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, your school is K through 12, correct? 
K through 12 plus a preschool, yes. Oh, oh, plus a preschool, okay. And is that private or charter? It's private. Private. Okay. And I believe that um, what I would consider to be a security person had indicated that you've had vandalism and of all types of misbehavior. So um, have you filed police reports or do you have any filings of police reports whenever there's a break in or? Yes, we have. You have? Yes. Offhand, could you give me an idea um, how often something like that occurs? Well, I can tell you that last two Sundays ago, a car was stolen out of our parking lot really? during the Sunday morning service. And I, I, it's at least on a monthly basis we're contacting the police. If you, would you mind how often? Okay. Okay. Monthly basis. You have, you have uh, security cameras? Yes, we do. Well, and actually, we just ramped up, up to a, another level. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I'm going to um, go ahead and close the public hearing now, and I'm going to bring it back to the uh, commission for any um, final thoughts, comments, and ultimately a decision. And nothing further. No, no final comments? No. Okay, then I'm going to ask for a... Um, decision uh, a motion from the um, commission I move that we adopt the mitigation negative declaration with a mitigation monitoring and reporting program for the site plan and associated conditional use permits and find tentative parcel map 19651 exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act. I, and I further move that we adopt resolution P16040 approving the fuel station conditional use permit portion of case number PLN 1600021 subject to uh, the conditions of approval. Uh, based upon the need for a fueling dispensing facility in the mid immediate area, non-detrimental effects to the public health, safety, and welfare, which are not material injuries, injurious to uses, properties, or improvements in the vicinity, and no traffic overloading or hazards to public safety, and conformance with all applicable standards of Title 16, and adopt Resolution P-16041, approving the site plan portion of case number PLN 16-00021, subject to the conditions of approval based upon conformance with site plan review criteria outlined in the municipal code. And adopt a resolution P-16042, approving the alcohol sales conditional use permit portion of case number PLN 16-00021, with a finding of public convenience or necessity subject to uh, conditions of approval uh, based upon conformance with the allowances provided by the municipal code, non-detrimental to the public health safety of, of wealth or welfare, which are not materially injurious to uses, properties, or improvements in the vicinity, no traffic overloading or hazardous public safety and conformance with all applicable standards of Title 16, and adopt resolution number P-16043, approving case number PLN-15-00017, subject to conditions of approval based upon conformance with requirements of the municipal code. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? <clears throat> Hearing no second, I will go ahead and make that second, but I want to add a possible addition um, to the motion. Um, I heard the applicant say that there would be no pornography items sold at this establishment. I don't believe we have any conditions currently in the staff report addressing that, do we? None? 
then I would like to amend your motion on the second to put it as a condition regarding um, any type of adult or pornography type materials throughout any of the facility will um, not be allowed. Accept that. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner Porter, a second by Vice Chair Kurth to approve the a project as conditioned with the exception of an additional uh, condition to the motion, um, not allowing any adult or pornography type materials be sold at this location, at this project location. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. So, um, we still have, we still have enough to approve this project, correct? Yeah, we have, a, okay, perfect. So we are, that project will be approved with um, Commissioner Porter, Vice Chair Kurth for the project, Commissioner Dew um, against the project, and uh, Chair Wilson absent for the vote, recused, and Commissioner Huber absent for the meeting. That, pro that project has been approved, folks. Um, I thank you all very much for coming here. Your comments have been well taken. I think this whole commission you know, understands your concerns, but at least for me, and I can't speak for the other con commissioners, um, taking this as a planning item, looking at the land zoning, this is not a rezone. Looking at the neighborhood, this is a major, major, major freeway with a major overpass with plenty more commercial to come. And also taking a look at the need of a fuel station and beer usually comes along with that. Um, that's where my decision came. But I thank you all very much um, for coming tonight and giving your opinions. It's much appreciated. Um, uh, should I mention a few? Um, no, they don't care. No, it's, I, I, it's just a good idea in case they, they don't know. Yes. Oh. oh, really? That's wonderful. Do you contact her? Oh, do contact her. She's going through a hard time right now. Oh, her mother's been really ill. Yeah. I think so too. Oh, I do too. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I still live there. Huh? Yes, you did. You did? Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, she, she'll appreciate a phone call, so. <coughs> yeah, that because, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you missed a fun yeah. time. <laughs> well, we've stopped. We got we got people in the audience. Yeah. If they would have known us for him, they'd all be there. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, he was recused, right? <laughs>
All right, we'll go ahead and uh, resume the meeting um, and move on to agenda item number two. Thank you, Chairman Wilson. Item number two is case DEV 16-6. It's a general plan amendment to modify the street cross sections within the circulation element with a proposed environmental <coughs> negative declaration. This proposed amendment would apply citywide. The amendment is needed to correspond with the city's non-motorized transportation plan and to also comply with the state's Complete Streets Act. The Complete Streets Act requires our circulation elements to be modified for a balanced multimodal transportation network that meets the needs of all users, such as bicyclists and pedestrians. Uh, before you today, uh, we'd like to get some feedback from you on uh, the proposed cross sections. Uh, staff has worked together with uh, engineering staff and also public work staff to um, re revise our cross sections to re-image um, the undeveloped areas within the city. Uh, there's two types of cross sections. There's a retrofit cross section that um, adds bike lanes within existing right of way. Um, the purpose there is to re do some restriping uh, to add these bike lanes within existing roadways. And where it's <coughs> undeveloped, um, there's a proposed street cross sections with add additional width um, with adequate lane widths for bicyclists. Um, and also uh, vehicles. It also adds a um, raised median to some of the uh, larger arterial ro roadways and uh, departs from our current 10 foot sidewalk um, adjacent to curb um, for commercial and a six foot sidewalk um, for residential areas. It, it's uh, the proposed cross sections would allow for a uh, a parkway landscape area between the curb and gutter and the sidewalk which would give additional space for pedestrians and um, it would be an eight foot width these proposals are just for um, collectors arterials um, and above it does not apply to our local street cross section that would not uh, be modified but it is still included in um, our standards for for streets uh, we did receive a uh, request for continuance from the building industry. Um, they wanted to look at other uh, alternatives and do some comparisons with other cities, and we want to allow them their due process and um, look at what they have uh, as far as feedback. Um, but today we'd recommend that you open the public hearing, provide any direction to staff that you may have, and then uh, can continue this uh, to the February 8th meeting. I have one question. Um, is five feet enough for a bike lane? I, I, I don't know that I would feel that safe in some, on some of the streets with just five feet. Well, the, the five That's feet is the minimum standard. Or uh, actually, the minimum standard is, uh, well, three and a half feet of pavement next to a gutter. Our gutters are usually one and a half feet wide. Uh -huh. Generally, five feet is the minimum standard, and it's true on higher speed, higher volume roads. Someone may not feel comfortable uh, being on a bicycle. That's why we've incorporated uh, a buffer on the, the streets that would be in undeveloped areas. Uh -huh. But the, our, our problem is we're trying to retrofit bike lanes into existing roads mm -hmm. and originally they weren't it was not contemplated that there would be bike lanes on those roads and so that that's a good comment but unfortunately uh, most of our through routes in the city are collectors or arterials uh, so the local roads usually aren't continuous enough or, or straight enough to have really good co connectivity so we're faced with if we do want to install bike lanes on the existing roads, that's kind of what we have to have is a five-foot bike lane. If I could add to Miss um, Porter that if, if you look at the back, on the back of attachment D or attachment D is the color uh, circulation map of the city and kind of shows you the reason why we would come forward to do this. And it, it basically shows you the whole west side of the city and the northern area of the city. There's still a lot of opportunities 
uh, where tracks haven't developed that will give us a good opportunity to get the right size bike lanes. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, all of the areas in where existing, develop it, it, dev existing development is, like Brian's saying, you, we've just got to work with what we've got. <laughs> I saw a comment from Doug today talking to somebody at ESCOM about right. bike lanes, and he said, you know, Nisqually is going to be the main one because Bear Valley is just is too ugly, <laughs> really. <laughs> and I kind of agree with that. But when I'm looking at the, um, the undeveloped stuff, the wider typed colored lines in a grid, all those collectors and arterials, those would all incorporate for the future bike lanes, correct? Yes. Okay. And it actually needs to be part of our circulation element in order for uh, the city to request that dedication of right away from the developer. Currently, we only have it in our non-motorized transportation plan, which doesn't give a, a width dimension to um, require that from a developer. So by incorporating these as part of our circulation element, it will streamline it. So when a development comes to town, we can tell them exactly what their half width dedication is or what their full width dedication would be. Which is why the BIA is looking into it and wants to, you know, <laughs> compare it to other areas so that we're not overdoing it because the developers are gonna lose a little more land. And, well, and it's that, like that's the end result. It's either going to be five or eight feet. So right. on on, eight, on of, both on sides. So that would be 16 feet that they'd have to give up. Yeah, there's a range. Some of them, some of them range an increase of 20 feet um, to some of the larger right of ways. Um, but in addition to the bike lane, there is there is some modifications to um, the parkway, um, separating that sidewalk away from the curb and gutter to provide additional separation and safety for um, pedestrians traveling on the roadway as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Questions? I will go ahead and open up the public comment portion of this agenda item. Anyone wishing to speak to this item? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment. Okay. What do we want to do? Oh, we want to leave the public item, public hearing open. Make a recommendation then to continue this item to our February eighth, two thousand seventeen planning commission meeting. And your and for the question of um, support, I I I, I support what I oh, see yes. here as far yes. as the enhancement. Uh, I agree. The enhancement of the arterials and collectors to incorporate a little bit wider and safer sidewalks and bike lanes. Certainly, and bike lanes. Definitely. Yeah. So I have a motion by Chair Wilson to continue this item to the February 8th Planning Commission meeting. A second by Vice Chair Kurth. Yeah, I'll second that. Okay, and um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So that will be continued um, to the February 8th, uh, 2017 meeting of the Planning Commission. Um, all approved with the exception of Commissioner Huber who is absent for the vote. All right, and moving on to agenda item number three. Thank you, Chairman Wilson. Item number three is case PLN 16-24. <coughs> it is a site plan and conditional use permit with an environmental exemption to allow for the addition of approximately 5,000 square foot warehouse building to an existing commercial operation on a parcel zone C1 neighborhood commercial. This is located at 15400 Village Drive. The app the applicant, which is Lifetime Solutions, currently operates a um, office and warehouse operation for home water and air filtration at the location on the south side of the site plan you see here before you. Um, their proposal is to create a metal, almost 5,000 square foot building to uh, expand their operations. Currently, warehousing is not a permitted use uh, within that zone, uh, but through a conditional use permit, the Planning Commission has the ability to allow that expansion. Um, they've complied with all other staff recommendations and um, municipal code standards. Um, we're available if you have any questions. Uh, there was one modification that we'd like to make to the conditions of approval from the fire department. 
um, and we'd request that you uh, remove conditions um, 48 and 49, their requirements for a sprinkler suppression system, which would not apply to this building if it's under 5,000 square feet, and it actually comes in at 4,996 square feet. <laughs> Just four more feet. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, any questions? Um, none. All right, I will go ahead and open up public comment in regards to agenda item number three. Anyone wishing to speak to this item? Good evening, good evening. Mr. Mr. Chairman, commissioners. Um, my name is Tom Stino. I'm the architect and representative for this project. Um, do we have the rendering at all, the colored rendering? It, it helps to see it a little bit better. Chance. Never got one. We had we had a colored rendering on this. It's in their agenda. Okay, we got page three sixty three. Uh, there you go. Okay, so you have that. Yep. So uh, it's a small little addition to an existing facility. It's Lifetime Solutions, a great business, has been around for quite a few years, uh, very successful, and uh, they need a little more space on their site. So we've uh, worked this out. Staff is uh, great to work with on this, and. Uh, I think we have a nice little project right here and it will enhance that whole frontage of that street mm -hmm. area right there. We're, we're gonna pave and landscape the whole remaining portion of that land. We'll merge all those together, those three lots. Uh, the fire, we've already taken care of that. And the only one other issue I did have is the, uh, here's what I wanna talk about. Sorry. Improvements. We're looking for the undergrounding on the back side there. If we can get a suspension, a number 43 a suspension agreement on those rear uh, power lines across the rear. They're currently all the way across the street right there, all the way down the street. So we're hoping that we can get a, a suspension agreement on, on not undergrounding those suspension lines. So uh, with that being said, I think everything else, we agree with the conditions and uh, we, we hope you're supporting the project. Any questions from, from me on this? Could we get a, in regards to the, under, the suspension agreement? It's already incorporated in uh, your resolution. Um, so if you were to approve the resolution as is, it would suspend those um, undergrounding requirements of the utilities. All right, perfect. Questions? Thank you, Tom. All right. And Chairman Wilson, I'd like to, uh, I hear you're stepping down after this I evening, am. so yes. uh, thank you for all your service. Thank you. You've been great for the years. Yes. All Thanks. Right. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak to agenda item number three? And then I'll go ahead and close public comment and bring it back to the commission. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I move to adopt Planning Commission Resolution P16030, approving the site plan portion of case number PLN 16-00024, including the requested underground utility suspension agreement, and adopt Resolution P16036, approving the conditional use permit portion of case number PLN 160024, subject to the attached conditions of approval, and find the project categorically exempt uh, under CEQA. Also, the elimination of conditions 48 and 49. I'll second. I have a motion by Commissioner Porter, a second by Vice Chair Kurth to approve the project as condition, including the suspension agreement, um, putting the power lines under the street. Uh, also, the removal of condition number 48 and 49 um, requiring the sprinkler suppression system for a building that's under 5,000 square feet. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So that project has been approved with Commissioner Huber absent for the vote. Congratulations. All right. Uh, in compliance with the Brown Act, is necessary for the Planning Commission to make available time for members of the public to address the Planning Commission on items of interest that fall within the Planning Commission's subject matter jurisdiction. Please limit the length of your comments to three minutes. Anyone wishing to speak to the Commission? 
And then I'll go ahead and close public comment. Move on to presentation by commissioners. An additional item. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Just Wait, presentation of commissioners. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Porter? You, you were going to make a presentation, but maybe my remarks would be in accordance with that. Oh, so They probably would, yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, th I think it was uh, fitting that your last meeting, uh, you had to sit out in the hall for an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was anticipating an hour, not an hour and a half. So <laughs> I lost. Well, no, actually, I was probably closer because I went farther. I went 6:05. So. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Can, can, can we extend this out for another two and a half hours like that longest <laughs> meeting ever? <laughs> oh, no. No, no. It, it won't happen. We used to have 40 items on the oh, agenda. I remember. Yeah. No. Well, I never. Rem I don't remember those. But. Oh, I do. Thank you. Um, first of all, um, this is the close of, uh, of this year, the month of December, and a lot of extraordinary things have occurred within that year um, from my perspective being on the Planning Commission, and I'm extremely grateful to have the opportunity to serve. Um, in addition to that, in the uh, two years that I have served, you have uh, been the chair for the commission, and with your leadership, I have grown to admire and respect your diligence in uh, conducting the uh, business of the city of Victorville um, in the best interest of the city of Victorville. And that's an admiration that I don't see uh, all the time, considering I've been on state boards and county boards and local boards and nonprofits. So as someone who's um, experienced a lot of interaction with colleagues uh, serving in executive positions, I rank you at, right at the top. Thanks so I want you to know that from me to you. Thank you for so thank you for your service and all that you do. Uh, I'd like to save mine till the end. Mr. Chairman, on behalf of the development department, we, I actually had a bigger speech plan because I really thought I was gonna convince the church members to stay and hear this presentation, <laughs> especially when a lot of them <coughs> thanked you all for your civic duty. I thought that they would stay here, and but uh, anyhow, I will cut it a little shorter since a lot of it you guys already know. Uh, yes, uh, one of the things that we like to do uh, when a commissioner leaves, especially after an eight-year tenure, is put together a PowerPoint program uh, to show what's been accomplished. Now, as you can see on there, it started in 2009, and you think, well, that was the economic downturn. We don't have much to do. We don't have much to talk about, right? <laughs> nope. Scott, what did you find for us? Well, first off, I, I wanted to go down memory lane a little bit here, and we took a little snapshot of what's occurred, what permits were issued um, during your tenure, and uh, we added 245 multifamily units, We've added over a thousand single-family dwelling units. Um, not noted here, but our population grew by 10,000 um, people, and we've added uh, close to 1.4 million square feet of industrial and 1.1 million square feet of commercial. Stop! Stop on that one for a second. Yeah, it's easy to do the industrial with SCLA. Hmm? We do $500,000 in a shot. A mil, over a million square footage of commercial in the downturn. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it is. And then looking at, looking at what the city was able to welcome as new tenants to the city, it's pretty impressive as well. We've had expansions to our auto mall with uh, Fiat and the Ram Truck Center and Mazda uh, coming to the city. Um, some of our large expansions that went online um, in SCLA or Plastic Pack and uh, Dr. Pepper Snapple. We also had a major remodel to um, the Mall of Victor Valley and our expansion of uh, Restaurant Row with uh, Panera Bread and hopefully some more soon. Um, but it's, it's, been, it's been good and you've been a part of it and uh, we thank you. 
and um, going on to some of our uh, future growth items um, we've had to tackle some issues as well um, growing a city has some growing pains along the way and first off one of the things that the commission tackled um, early on and uh, I think in 2010 was updating our development code we went from title 18 to title 16 which included um, building code enforcement planning we also streamlined all of our standards and a lot of more easy to use uh, uh, table formats as you see here uh, most recently we we tackled some problematic uses um, hydroponic shops internet cafes money service businesses pawn shops smoke shops they were they're all prohibited. And um, I will try right and now. call Mr. Taylor and explain to him that he wasn't, he didn't have it quite right when he was talking about the, the, the alcohol and the, what we actually prohibited. So I will try and uh, yeah. reach out to him. And part of that too was, was strengthening alcohol standards uh, throughout the city. Uh, we, uh, we spent a year or so on uh, single family design guidelines, which, uh, um, we went forward and uh, we got a good document in place that will uh, guide our, our city into the future. You, you've seen the changes in the tracks already that we, in the last few that we've had. And what size are those lots? <laughs> 10,000 square foot, oh, oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> and then most recently, uh, we created some criteria for PUDs and specific plans to mandate certain open space and amenities for those smaller lot communities. And it's been a while, but we <laughs> we up, we created a specific plan and uh, f to uh, to uh, welcome the high speed train if it comes to town. <laughs> but there, this is a well planned uh, document that uh, will serve us well in the future as that northern area of the city expands and develops. We also had a climate action plan. Um, it's state mandated, but we also, um, it's a tool for developers to streamline their process through uh, CEQA to comply with their greenhouse gas emissions. We had a non-motorized plan. We're discussing it again today with uh, updating our cross sections, but this uh, provided the framework um, to utilize a lot of our utility corridors for trail systems and also um, creating other bike paths and uh, pedestrian paths throughout the city. And then the St. Mary's Medical Center, I know it's been stalled a bit, but there is um, a good document that was, was uh, approved by the commission and council that uh, creates a commercial um, medical campus on our southern part of our city um, that will prove to uh, be beneficial in the future as well. And uh, collectively, we just want to thank you for your service and dedication to the city of Victorville and making it a better place to live, play, play and work. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I can honestly say it has not felt like eight years. It's, I was talking with Darcy this evening when I came home. Oh, nice. There's a picture on the slideshow yeah. that actually exists. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's nice. Of course. The bottom way I could, maybe I could put in a, my two cents was. Yeah, please. When, when um, probably in the first half or more of your tenure, we thought, all right, he's, he seems a little shy and a, a little reserved. You know, he doesn't speak on a lot of the, the cases that don't need to be spoken on, but he speaks on the ones that he feels need to be spoken on. And when he speaks, he speaks well, and his points are well taken. And then two years ago when you got nominated for chairman, and then when you accepted it, we went, whoa, wait a minute. Shy, reserved, Bob, what's he going to do? What is he doing? <laughs> and I think Scott and I were kind of looking at each other going, hmm, this is interesting. What's going to happen? Is he showboating? Is he politics? What is he? And then I think just after your two years, like Mr. Dew just said, I think you just knew you could do a good job at it and you did an excellent job at it and that's Thank all you. it was about. It wasn't about anything else other than doing a great job. Uh, and well, that's Thank you, yeah. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> again, it's, it's been, well, just, uh, I wrote this up here, just, it's, to me it's an odd feeling, you know, thinking that this is my last 
commission. Sure. Um, Eight years is a you long know, time. I guess I do in reference is when I started, Jordan, my son, was three, and now he's 11. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's kind of that's how I look at it. You know, it, it's. But I think of all the things that we've done. When you drive, when I drive around the city and go, oh, oh yeah, that Walmart right there. Oh, 395 Crossroads. Oh yeah. Oh, the, that development right there. <laughs> oh, that you know, whatever that building is, and going, oh, I remember when that came before us. And you know, it's it is neat to see the growth. And what I did is I just kind of put a couple things down here. Is you know, it, it hasn't quite sunk in yet. You know, it's one of those things. But um, but you never know. Prior commissioners have a way of showing up again because. I mean, Larry's I was I was gonna say that too. <laughs> Larry Rob's been here. Larry Huber and Rob Kurth are on their second stand. Can't get out that so, easy. Uh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, but I did want to thank Ryan McCachran, um definitely for giving me the opportunity to represent him. Because, like you said, when when I was asked, I was shocked. It was I was never expecting it, and it really did put me outside of my comfort zone. Um, you know, I've okay. I, so we were kind of right. No, then. you were because, but I, I've. <laughs> I've, I've I, I actually <laughs> called Rob and had we went to lunch and he put me at ease and I he answered all my questions that I had and just cuz I didn't know I mean I've I've headed up the apartment association I've sat on state boards you know I I've been involved I, I mean I was president of the Atlanta chamber for almost 3 years and sat on that board for gosh 9 or 10 years and but this was different. This is like, a, <laughs> you know, this is a bigger animal, and, and I didn't know. But, but Rob really, you know, he he put me at ease. So I, I want to thank you for that. <laughs> that. Um, and then I'd also like to thank you know Scott and Chris and Mike and Brian and Tessa. Um, you guys, you guys have always been there to help me when I've had questions and I've. You know, you guys have given me your guidance, your input. Um, when I've at times thought of I was heading down a certain path and then come and talk to you guys and you say, oh, no, no, what, this is exactly, this is what it says either on the code or whatever and flip the page over. Oh, there it is right there. But you guys have made, this is a, you know, this potentially is a very difficult job and you guys made it so much easier. And I just want to thank you because you guys helped me out so much. Um, and then lastly, I want to thank Commissioner Dew, Commissioner Porter, Commissioner Huber, Commissioner Kurth, and also the prior commissioners who were here when I got here was uh, Matt Smith and Donnie Jones when I first got here. But I wanted to thank them for their support and, and your guys' friendship over the years. Um, and really, I, the only thing I could sum it up is it's been a good feeling to know that after we've worked together towards the betterment of the city, um, we've all worked together. And, and I really enjoy that because like Commissioner Dew said, there's many boards that you sit on or organizations you're part of that either people have an agenda or they can't see eye to eye. But even with us, even when we have a disagreement, or I shouldn't even say a disagreement, but when we feel maybe a project isn't right for where it's being located or, or whatever your opinion is, at the end of the day, we're still friends and, and we've all worked towards the common goal of making the city better. So with that, I also want to say thank you. The only thing that I was going to say is it's a privilege to um, be on a, a board such as this where everybody comes and they've read their agenda. They're actually prepared. They really have thought about things a lot. And they're, they're more professional than, than most, but probably than most uh, um, planning commissioners are. And it's just a privilege to be with you guys. And we'll, we will miss you, Bob. I'm going to miss you guys. I want to know what to do next month. <laughs> <laughs> As staff, I would like to second Paula's comments. It makes it really easy um, for us to work for you when you are the way you are. I mean, all of you. Uh, you're easy to work with. You're no, not a problem. It makes our jobs easier. And fun. <laughs> That's good. That's all I can keep saying thank you because it's... <laughs> It's been an honor, and it's been, I've had a great time. You never know, I might be back if I get an opportunity. I mean, I would do, do it again in a heartbeat. So, anything else? Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry holidays. <laughs> so, I guess uh, my final task is uh, <laughs> closing <laughs> the meeting of the December 14, 2016. The, there you go. Pending commission. <laughs>
you know it doesn't hurt to go to the new uh, city council member and just take him in. Because That's why the experience. Oh, I know, yeah, because he had the, the two guy that showed up for was was one and then he never showed up again. Oh, thank you, yes, transport please. It. So that was Gloria, huh? Yeah, that was Gloria's mm -hmm. before Rob's mm -hmm. And And, you know, we, we can make recommendations too. I mean, if she wants recommendations, we yeah, are I glad have, to get I had an approach, I, I spoken with we Brian a couple times. Mm -hmm. It had, oh, it has to go to the council. Yeah. Are we having a January meeting? Yeah, we are. Oh, that's right. We are. Yeah, there's not enough. Yeah. We're adjourned to January. Sure. <laughs> Sounds good to me. January 11th, let's make it happen. Did you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Second Wednesday of the month. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, we'll see you around.